Good evening, everybody. My name is Esther Zanamrasi. I am on this platform as myself, Dr. Esther Zanamrasi, and my brand is called Simply Healthier. I want to discuss this evening the topic of menopause. And as usual, my aim for these webinars are to the, the aim is to get us to think and to consider things that perhaps we haven't ever considered and to see how to apply what we have in our opportunity. And that's why I call these sessions Applied Near Life, because what we have is phenomenal. It is absolutely natural. And it's very much like menopause. Menopause is actually a natural process, okay? So when it happens naturally, it is not simply a sudden stop of menstruation. That often happens when it, uh, a sudden stop in menstruation is when it is unnatural, for example, surgically. But naturally, menopause is not a sudden stop of menstruation. It is a long, gradual process of diminishing hormone levels. Now, we've discussed hormones from all sorts of angles. This is just yet another discussion on hormones. Why is premenopausal choices make the world healthier and happier. Now the operative word there is pre-menopause, pre-menopause, which means right from the beginning, I suppose. So creating awareness is what we are all about. Menopause is not a disease. And I just want to point out that the mindset matters. How do we view menopause? Are you over the hill or do you view it as an exciting phase of your life? Because how you look at something is very, very important. So what I meant by we need to start from the beginning is the, all these stages of life and menopause generally happens when you're approaching, when a woman is approaching the golden years. So let's look at some facts about hormones. Hormones are of the endocrine system and it comprises of glands that produce those hormones forming the body's information superhighway. So the key glands are the pituitary, the thyroid, parathyroid, and the pancreas and the gonads. And uh, I hope you will enjoy learning a bit more about ovaries and testes and hormones in this particular webinar. Many hormonal imbalances, amazingly, have similar symptoms and one imbalance often results in other hormones becoming imbalanced. And so the common symptoms, we'll go through them very quickly. Change in menstruation, yes, that is a hallmark of menopause where the change is actually cessation, total stop eventually. And then unwanted changes in libido, difficulty regulating temperature, changes in bowel habits, persistent fatigue, mood disorders, hair growth disorders, memory loss, brain fog, osteoporosis is a big one. Sleep disorders is a very big one as well. And of course, um, another big one is unintended weight changes. So now I thought I would take a different slant as I enjoy doing and bring this concept from traditional Chinese medicine called yin and yang. Many of us have heard of it, but haven't really looked at it critically. So the yin, according to the traditional Chinese medicine concept, is that side of us that is nurturing, it is introverted, it tends to be passive, it's calm, it's intuitive and soft. And estrogen, and progesterone, which are predominantly um, female hormones, tend to produce the yin characteristics. 
But I must tell you that both estrogen and estrogen, both genders, men and women. And then the yang, it is the active, outgoing, focused, aggressive, logical, and sometimes the impatient characteristic. And testosterone, testosterone and DHEA, those are the hormones responsible for male sexual development, tend to produce young characteristics. Now, the concept in Chinese uh, uh, traditional medicine is that both should occur together. Both should occur together in one individual, okay? So that's what I mean by we all have both with more yin in females and more yang in males. Now, this is a generalization. Please feel free to discuss and debate this point after the webinar. So let's carry on. I bring it up because this is the question, is modern lifestyle pushing women over the edge? Okay, is it pushing women over the edge? Pulling on young characteristics, that is the aggressive, the focused, the, you know, really go-getting and uh, all those characteristics tend to cause us to suppress the yin, the softer nurturing side of ourselves. And this will cause a constant state of fight or flight or freeze, eventually leading to exhaustion of the adrenals where all those um, stress hormones are produced and the ovaries. Now that is quite serious. And then comes menopause for the women and andropause, by the way, for the men. So men are not let off this hook. So menopause, as we know, is when hormones drop below uh, the level at which menstruation can be sustained. And so we describe it as menopause. And it tends to have two characteristics. Talking about hormones, progesterone deficiency and estrogen dominance. So those are the two things that tend to happen. Progesterone becomes deficient and estrogen becomes dominant. Very interesting. So what are we talking about now? Menopause or premenopause seems to be happening earlier, usually in by the mid thirties, most women are beginning the, that phase that is known as premenopause. Some people call it perimenopause, by the way. And it is caused by progesterone deficiency, as I've just pointed out, long before the actual menopause, before people stop menstruating. And then uh, estrogen dominance that I just mentioned as well is due to the follicles that produce the progesterone being depleted. And as a result, another hormone that is released from the pituitary called follicle stimulating hormone shoots up, okay? So those are all technicalities that you can mull over later. It is also, a, there's also a tendency for weight gain during that time. And if one isn't intentional about controlling the weight gain as a result of perhaps poor diet or lack of exercise, that excessive body fat can cause the premenopause uh, life to be quite um, difficult. And then another big one is the effect of xenoestrogens. Those are the estrogens that are from outside the body that are not naturally supposed to be in us, such as what we find in detergents and skincare and petroleum fumes and perhaps oral contraceptives and all those things. So 
that is a bit more information about premenopause, and there's a long list of premenopause symptoms. And you can look at that list, but <laughs> it's pretty long. But let me just go down to the bottom of the list, which talks about the development of uterine fibroids, fibrocystic breasts, heavy menstrual bleeding, endometriosis. And then despite normal lab findings, there are symptoms of hypothyroidism, unstable blood sugar, and then up here, the sort of like the subjective symptoms, cravings for sweets, cravings for coffee, cravings for carbohydrates, you know, uh, cakes and things like that, and uh, heavy carbohydrates. So as we can see, all of us have experienced or know some people, loved ones who are experiencing the stresses and strains of life, holding a job, running a family, perhaps they might be in that age group that we can classify as premenopausal, and therefore they might be the very people that we can assist with, with what we've got. So in summary, these are the major um, symptoms and signs. Hot flashes. Hot flashes is actually as a result of the circulatory system being made to become very unstable as a result of those hormonal changes. And I've mentioned most of these other things in the previous um, slides. Sleep disorder is a big one that perhaps we could discuss ways of helping. So let us look and listen carefully, but let's also think about our societies and think about how it used to be, and how come perhaps um, people of um, um, grandmothers' generations and uh, people before our foremothers didn't suffer such uh, hectic symptoms, okay? So societies without menopause problems are found to normally have low estrogen levels to begin with. So that estrogen dominance is a big issue. Their diets are high in phytoestrogens, which are plant-based. And these phytoestrogens block some of the stronger estrogens produced within our body. Now, at the same time, plant-rich diets are also rich in fiber and fiber aids with metabolism and excretion of excess estrogen. Isn't that amazing? So there's another good reason for ensuring that there's adequate fiber and adequate plant foods. Because an abnormal gut microbiome can cause the gut to reabsorb estrogen that the body is trying to get rid of. And then it just becomes reabsorbed. Worse if there is constipation. And that is something that you need to listen out for, look out for. And then continue to listen carefully because low base levels of serotonin, serotonin is a neurotransmitter, can be due to deficiency of tryptophan. Tryptophan is one of the essential amino acids and vitamin B6, which comes within the B complex or in other products as well. So when that happens and one approaches premenopause or the menopause itself, just a slight drop in serotonin levels may result in major psychological upheaval that we have come to associate with menopause, okay? Yes, and then there's the very real concern of osteoporosis. The very real concern of osteoporosis is something that we need to concern ourselves about. So this is just a picture to show somebody who is looking depressed and is wondering what to do. So basically we need to keep the doctor in the loop. If you find a good doctor, keep her in the loop or him in the loop. 
Reduce alcohol, times with friends and family, eat healthily. And if there are still women that smoke, advise them to stop. So osteoporosis after menopause, let's just discuss osteoporosis. It's a disease of excess bone loss and factors leading to osteoporosis include the usual factors that we've gone through a few times, poor diet, progesterone deficiency, because progesterone actually restores bone mass and lack of exercise. Now for those that are new to this platform, you might wonder, oh my gosh, are we supposed to be exercising? Yes, we are, <laughs> because our bones have what we call osteoclast and osteoblast act act activity. Osteoclast is to uh, break down, osteoblast action is to build up, okay? So the, this action responds to physical stress because mineralized bone is a crystalline structure that is called hydroxy upper appetite. Anyway, be that as it may, it just reminded me as I was uh, um, looking at this that it's very much like a diamond. A diamond is formed under pressure of an old block of wood, perhaps some old block of wood, and under pressure and time, it becomes a diamond, very much like our bones. They will develop value and quality when they are under some physical stress. So that is the, the, the thing about exercise and that's why we emphasize it at every given opportunity, particularly resistance exercise. And so that's just a picture to remind us of that. And how bones become depleted, uh, here are some pointers that will lead to acceleration of osteoporosis, excess protein. You know, a lot of us were socialized at some point in our lives that we have, the more meat we are eating, the more prosperous we are. But it has now been shown that we only need as little as 40, maybe 60 grams. The word here is grams of meat or of uh, protein per day. Sorry, I missed out the word grams. Um, and if you eat red meat, for, as an example, each piece of red meat, if let's say you have 100 uh, grams, a gram piece of meat, 25 of those grams will be protein. And if you eat that amount of meat in a day, you've actually eaten uh, almost what you require for that day. Anything additional <laughs> will lead to bone loss. So the takeaway message here is that daily intake of meat leads to bone osteoporosis. And then the next thing is antibiotics. A lot of us will medicate ourselves with antibiotics. The net effect of that is it kills off gut bacteria. And once gut bacteria are dead, there is no vitamin K production. And vitamin K production uh, means that the bones cannot be made properly if there's no vitamin K. It's the vitamin that helps to build bone, as well as vitamin D, as well as other nutrients. But I've singled that one out because it is produced by gut bacteria. Then um, uh, fluoride. Recently, we spoke about fluoride. Fluoride has been shown to inhibit enzymes and this causes change in the bone that can increase the risk of fractures. And that's why a lot of postmenopausal women, a small fall, a slight fall or a heavy fall, and they fracture their hip. And that can cause a lot of problems to them thereafter. And then metabolic acidosis, that means when the, there's a tendency to acidity, um, it can result from too much sugar, too much meat, um, and things like that. What happens then is that the body, in trying to keep balance, to maintain balance, will draw calcium, magnesium from bone, and the bones will become osteoporotic. Alcohol abuse, hyperthyroidism, 
If the thyroid gland is overworking, it accelerates osteoclast activity, the breakdown of bone, and uh, the, or the resorption of bone, okay? And then if anybody has ever been on cortisone medications, for whatever reason, there are a lot of um, uses of cortisone medications, um, and usually for a long time, that can accelerate osteoporosis. So we need to remember as regards bones that bone building continues throughout life. It's a very active and very dynamic process. So it is important to do the basics. We shouldn't forget, for example, the basic of exercise. Now, women are blessed in that we have um, the awesome privilege of becoming mothers and uh, bringing forth the next generation. That leads to amazing and sometimes irreversible um, hormonal swings and changes. So that causes a lot of estrogen to be pumped out. And yes, the result of that can be that um, once we see that the ultimate we will have the benefits of improved circulation and it will reduce mood swings. It will normalize uh, certain minerals such as uh, too much copper and too little zinc and the utilization of those minerals. And then it will decrease the risk of migraine, fibroids, endometriosis, or ask about and are looking for solutions too. So that's just a little schema to show what happens to the hormones during the pre-menopause. And this yellow one is the one I, I mentioned, which when uh, the pituitary pumps out extra, and that's why we have relating hormone. It's almost like it's saying, where is the hormone? Where is the hormone? So it keeps pumping out more and more, looking to um, trigger the hormone to be produced, but calm down, I suppose. So now, I have this question for everybody. Is hormone replacement therapy a good idea? That once became the hallmark of treating a medicalized condition called the menopause, which I, we have all agreed is not a medical condition. It is a natural process. So it became the in, the in thing to treat it with hormone replacement therapy. And I must say some people still think that that's the way to go because of that mentality that something is missing, we have to do something about it. We have to top up. So uh, a report in the New England Journal of Medicine um, a few years ago said that the link between hormone replacement therapy and breast and ovarian cancer, as well as autoimmune disease was a real link. And use of estrogen therapy was, is generally not advised if, if um, there is a family history of conditions such as breast or uterine cancer, fibroids, and all those things, including liver and gallbladder disease. Now, not everybody has the time or even knows how to start finding out, do we have a, a, um, a family history of these things? Anyway, let's get to the real issue. The real issue is this, that synthetic estrogen that a hormone replacement therapy is made out of is not easily broken down by the body's enzymes. And sometimes it may be a natural form of um, estrogen, but extracted from the horse, a pregnant uh, horse, a pregnant mare. And the potency of that is way, way above what the body can deal with, okay? So the net result is that there's accumulation, which leads to increased fluid retention, high blood pressure, and an increased risk of clots. So you can debate it yourself, whether it's a good idea or not. Um, I'm sure you can gather all the women who are wanting to discuss it. But um, let us talk about natural versus synthetic. So my question is, is it natural? 
or is it synthetic, okay? And um, I'll just give you a little bit of history which I found fascinating. In the year 1939, there was a scientist called Russell E. Marker who was able to convert something in the wild yam, um, and this is the name of the wild yam, uh, Dioscoria villosa, and he converted it into progesterone that was oh, bioidentical. That's what the, that's the term referred to it, okay? Bioidentical. This was indeed a breakthrough because many women really needed something natural to manage the, the symptoms. And, but before they could get their benefits, there was intensive campaigning for synthetics. And that's because something that is natural, this wild yam cannot be patented, whereas something made synthetically can. So that began the preparations to make um, patentable uh, uh, preparations began. And so came things like progestins, progestogens, and all that. Now, those are the synthetic versions and are often marketed as progesterone. And now to the person who doesn't know the difference, they'll just say, oh, that must be progesterone. Let me use it. Okay. So there is that to be aware of and just to, to make note of. Now, let me ask the question, why is progesterone important? Okay. And this is the reason why I've really emphasized progesterone in this, because it is important. In the ovaries, it is the precursor of estrogen. In the testes, for men, it is the precursor of testosterone. And in the adrenal glands, it is the precursor of several important hormones, such as cortisol, corticosteroids, aldosterone, all those are names of um, hormones that are found in the adrenal glands and many others. So yes, progesterone is super important. In other words, restoring proper progesterone levels is restoring hormone balance. Have we thought about it enough? Perhaps, I don't know, maybe not enough. Promotes the survival and development of the embryo and fetus. This is long before we are thinking about menopause. It is the precursor of steroid hormones, which are required, and it provides a broad range of intrinsic biological effects, a broad range. And yeah, so it's very, very important, progesterone. So let's go on. I, I just want to remind all of you of something very important in our cells, and that is the mitochondria. And I like to bring it up from time to time just so that we never forget how intricate we are as human beings. We are made fearfully and wonderfully. And in each cell are thousands or hundreds or tens of thousands of mitochondria which work inside that cell. And this is why I bring it up because nutrition is very important. Mitochondria need the right nutrients. So when we keep our end of the deal, because it is our responsibility to provide the right nutrients. Our cells are so intelligent that they know what to do. And now look, nutrients that are provided go to the mitochondria as forms of fat, specifically cholesterol, by the way. Cholesterol is the, the template on which a lot of things are made. And that will create pregnenolone, pregnenolone which then goes down one path into as progesterone in the ovaries, testes, and adrenal glands, just as I've outlined above. And then the body to do the work it's supposed to do, wherever it's supposed to do it, and then ultimately excreted via the liver and through the stool. And so let's look at nutrition. We all know that we belong to the most awesome nutrition company, and we can trust them. We have a, a history of scientific excellence. And so for the visitors, for the guests, um, we have a, a dedicated scientific advisory board that does all the research and development and the hard miles 
We don't need to do that because it has been done and it continues to be done and we can surely trust them. Now, they were among the first to really, and everything in our product ranges, everything is natural, it is human natural. And so just as a quick one, this is for the uh, guests. We have this uh, wellness triangle, which says that we should do physical activity and you've seen why we should eat of the wrong fats and sugars and have the right fats and sugars. And then and the fat and sugar in the right ratio and the right type is what will be converted into cholesterol. And that will power up the mitochondria. Unfortunately, the typical part is that we lose a lot of good energetic life we live mainly in the tired and sick zone for a long time pre-menopause. So we have a concept called the core products and of them is pro vitality and the shake. And we have these oils in trianen and omega-3. So I'm going to talk more about them. Those are the foundation of hormones. Trianen gives us the lipids and phytosterols from plants. And then omega-3 gives us the pure cholesterol that then is used to build the hormones that we need to, uh, to prevent the deficiency of progesterone. And so here's the health, uh, just to show critical components for cells that support the transport of nutrients into and waste out of cells. Very, very, very important. And this is where to begin. And that's why it is in our core nutrition. So we've talked about menopause, premenopause, and bones. And that is perhaps where we need to take greatest care. You will need all those core nutrients. But now let's look at the targeted uh, nutrients. Calcium and magnesium, CalMag, and full motion are important because we need to make sure that by the time we get to menopause, we have adequate reserves of bone, rather than if our lifestyle is such that there is inadequate nutrients, inadequate exercise, and obviously inability of the body to create enough of the progesterone that I've spent the evening telling you about. And so, yes, we need to fill all those um, gaps. Near life is the only three, complete in the sense that it has all the eight molecules that make up a complete omega. Many people sell omega, it's available in um, various formulations, but most people just give you the EPA and the DHA that make it complete, and you need all of them to work together. And that is the power of completeness, and that is the near life difference. And then let's talk ab about uh, control of sugar. Glycemic response control is very, very important. I pointed out that too much sugar is one of the things that causes acidity, that causes depletion of bone come menopause. And so we need to keep it within a narrow range and to provide the protein. Near life shake provides the protein, vitamins and minerals. And we have to remember that during menopause, women are at a higher risk of developing cardiovascular diseases. So there's a range of things. And let's just move on. Um, yes, women and heart disease. It, well, I just wanted to point this out that Supplementation makes a lot of sense. If we are to get what we need, it is way more economical and totally possible to supplement rather than to say, I eat enough fish. Because yeah, if you're eating enough of the fish, are you capable of removing the contaminants such as lead, mercury, and various PCBs? I don't think so. So let's um, look at that carefully. And then, during menopause, one of the complaints is that, oh, very forgetful. In fact, after that, we start seeing overt 
uh, signs of dementia, which may have started during the premenopausal time. And remember, we said premenopause starts in the 30s, in when it's for concern, a cause for concern. Now, I wanted to say about our amazing product that we have called the Feminine Herbal Complex. It has that wild yarn as the first item. Each of you, I'd like you, if you have the pack, to look at it. It is the first item. And uh, according to labeling rules and laws, the most uh, abundant item is put first. And that is what we have in Feminine Herbal. Dioscoria villosa. It's from the root, and each tablet contains the extract, and the dry weight is 761 milligrams. And so it is a natural progesterone uh, supplement that we are proud to have, and that's why it works so well. And uh, for menopause and the symptoms of menopause, such as low mood, low vitality, anxiety, irritability, fluid retention, hot flashes, um, discomfort, flu yeah, all those things. It's a good product. So let me now rush through. Uh, flavonoid complex has mild estrogenic properties. So if you're looking for another reason to spoil yourself and buy yourself a, a flavonoid complex, here is another one. Um, the, these ones are cruciferous, but this will come and take up the residence on the estrogen receptors of the cells, and thereby the stronger estrogens will not be able to take up those places and will not have an effect. And that is how to bring that estrogen dominance down and the inflammation that occurs. Yes, I just put things uh, here to show. Cruciferous, for example, when, when one is looking for something to advise for menopause, this is another very important one. Lipotropic, similarly, vitamin C, very, very strong bones. Then we have to remember to keep our weight management at all times because too many fat cells, too much fat, uh, a high fat ratio is one of the things that predisposes to very hectic menopausal symptoms. And inflammation, we need to reduce it at all times. These are not is, um, hormone disrupting. And so my question is that by changing your buying habits, I would like you to know for the visitors and the guests that G1 Laundry does not have hormone disrupting chemicals. And remember, menopause is really a case of hormones that are being disrupted big time. They're already on the decline. You don't want them to be disrupted more than they should be. And then nutrients organic for the skin. Yes, we have to make sure that we keep our skins healthy. We need to continue um, controlling blood sugar as well. And I'm just showing you these so that you know that we have a variety. You don't need to use all of them. Although if you build your businesses good and strong, you can afford to use as many as possible. This is our stress reliever. And I'm telling you that during menopause, it really comes in handy um, to, re to relieve the various manifestations of low progesterone, such as bloatedness, constipation, and things like that. So, there is no artificial anything in any of our products. We mustn't keep it a secret. As women, we like to share. So we need to keep sharing. And I am going to stop sharing now. Thanks. So if you'd like to discuss anything, you are welcome.